With the bulk of the structure now complete, we'll move on to building up the centre and adding to the main core XY linear carriage in this section with the next extruder assembly. Much of the next extruder is pretty identical to the Mark IV-S, and even the Mark IV before it in fact, so a lot of this section of the build should be quite familiar if you've built a previous generation machine. With that said, let's crack on. So we'll start with the idler levers found in the electronics package. Begin by inserting two pins and two bearings. Again, these are all located in the electronics package before covering with the top half and securing with a single M3 by six screw until snug. Take care not to over tighten this screw, just enough so that both bearings are able to turn freely. Finally, from the same side as the screw, insert a single tubular spacer, just enough so it sits flush with the bottom. Don't be tempted to centre this, it needs to sit flush on one side and protrude from the top. Place this to one side for the moment as we'll now build up the main extruder using the extruder motor, found in the motors package. Keep the electronics package handy here as all the following parts will be located there. Begin by placing a spacer over the shaft of the motor, pushing down the neck and to the base. And with the motor orientated so the wire protrudes from the top, place the main heatsink down on top so that the heatsink cables face the right side and the gap in the heatsink is to the left side of the motor. And then cover with the main plate. Again, take note of orientation here. The protruding sections of the plate face downwards and into the gap in the heatsink with the small cutout on the bottom left. We need to install the gearbox next, so with it in hand, proceed to place the gears into the gear assembly adapter so they sit nice and flush. Next comes the PG ring. Notice the teeth on the inner side. One side has a very slight chamfer. Ensure the chamfer is facing downwards and drop the ring over the tool carefully so that it meshes perfectly with the gears. You may need to wiggle the ring around a little to get both to meet. With that done, maintain the position of the assembly and drop it down on the extruder motor shaft. Very gently and freely rotate until it drops down. Let gravity do the work here. And once in place, remove the assembly tool and ensure the gear assembly sits flush inside the ring and that the ring is flush against the main plate. Now we can go ahead and insert the idler assembly we constructed earlier in between the ring and the extruder motor, sliding into the small cutout on the main plate and secure with a 3x25 socket set screw, which feeds through the tubular spacer. Do not over tighten this screw, it should protrude from the ring after tightening and is not designed to sit flush. With that done, reach for your tube of lubricant and proceed to place a little around the gear assembly. You won't need to go crazy with the grease here, just a little dotted around will be perfectly fine. After which we can cover the top plate and secure using three M3 by 25 screws. You don't need to crank down the screws here, just a nice snug fit is fine since we'll be loosening these again later in the build when we come to calibrate the gearbox. At this point, the idler door on the side should move relatively freely and we'll need to construct the idler swivel to secure it closed using these parts from the electronics package. Hold one side then and insert an M3x20 round head screw in through the larger side, drop on a spacer and cover with the opposite side before securing into an M3 lock nut. Hold the nut with the included wrench or needle nose pliers as you tighten, but take care not to over tighten. The spacer should be able to turn freely. Next, insert the idler nut in this orientation, feed through another M3 by 20 screw, and again tighten into an M3 lock nut. As before, do not over tighten, just enough so that the nut can still rotate relatively freely. In order to attach this to the extruder assembly, take two M3 by 30 screws and drop a spring onto each, after which we feed both through the top two holes above the extruder motor and tighten into the idler swivel we just prepared. Note the orientation of the part here. The side of the nut with the two small arrows should be pointing upwards, as shown here. 
Tighten the screws only until they sit flush with the front face of the idler nut, after which we can test by closing and opening the idler door. Ok so with that all working fine we'll get the NTC thermistor installed. This drops into the hole at the bottom of the heatsink, although ensure it goes into the side with the motor and secure with an M3x4 grub screw going in from the bottom. Tighten gently but firmly, enough to keep the sensor in place but not far enough to cause any damage. That's the next router pretty much prepared now, so time to get this installed onto the main printer. To do this we'll need the three next router spacers found in the electronics and fasteners package. Begin by covering the heat bed, either with a box or with a cloth, just to protect it in case anything should fall during the next few steps. After which we can install the three spacers by screwing them onto the next router holder. Tighten these relatively firmly, but still taking care not to over tighten and strip any threads. We can now line up the heatsink from the next router with the installed spacers and secure using three M3x10 screws. Again, there's no need to over tighten these screws, just enough until snug. And ensure the thermistor cable is pointing to the left. We'll cover the heatsink with the heatsink fan next, located in the electronics package. So go ahead and place the fan with the sticker side down against the heatsink. Note the fan cable, it should be coming out from the bottom left side. When correct, go ahead and secure the fan to the heatsink using two M3x18 screws tightening gently but firmly so as to not crack the plastic fan housing. We now have the fan and thermistor cable loose here so in order to neaten these somewhat, locate the hot end cable clip from the printed parts package and feed both cables through the right hook, before lining up the clip with the two holes on the extruder holder and using M3x4 screws to secure. Again going into plastic here so a nice snug fit is all that's required. Another smaller electronic board to mount next, referred to admiringly as the Prusa Love Board. We'll be installing this onto its plastic mount, so locate this from the printed parts package along with its cover, and the main Love Board cable from the electronics and fasteners package. Starting with the Love Board mount then, insert an M3 square nut into the small gap beside the 90 degree channel, pushing it in so it lines up with the corresponding hole and then insert a second on the opposite end of the part, again until it lines up with the hole on the side. With that done, we move to the printhead cover and insert a further two M3 square nuts on the back side, making sure to push all into place, and a final on the inner side. Covers now prepared, so go ahead and seat the love board into its mount. Note orientation here, so it's the side with the channel up top and the board seats in this way, so the text is facing you and in the correct direction. Once verified, secure with a single M3x8 screw, taking care not to over tighten and damage the board. Once attached, flip the assembly over, and plug the main cable into the largest port on the board. Note that we're plugging in the end without the label. After which we can proceed to give the cables half a twist, and pass them over the board to the other side and down until it's seated nicely in the 90 degree channel. Sticking with the same side, drop in two M3x10 screws into the bottom two holes on the love board mount, and then place the cover on top, before using another two M3x10 screws to secure its position, taking care not to pinch any cables while you tighten. Also check there's no large gap between parts. Next, reach for the cable clip in the printed parts bag, and carefully open it so as to not crack the part in order to wrap it around the cable bundle, around 5cm in from the end of the sleeve. Then placing the loveboard assembly down on your protected heat bed, proceed to push the other end of the cable bundle over and down the right rear corner of the core XY assembly, where there will be a hole at the back of the wire motor mount. Line up the clip, noting the recess in the clip should be facing outwards here, and insert an M3x10 screw to secure the clip to the mount. Now it was difficult to get the right camera angle for you here, but a ball head driver certainly does help. Ok so with one end secured, go ahead and place the love board mount on the rear of the next extruder assembly in this orientation, so the hole in the top aligns with the threaded hole in the heatsink, 
in order to insert and tighten a PTFE tube fitting, using the wrench to ensure it's relatively tight, after which we secure the remainder of the mount from the back side using the two screws at the bottom that we loosely inserted earlier. With that done, we'll install our swing arm next from the metal parts package. Simply align with the two threaded holes near the top right corner and secure with two M3 by 8 screws until snug. Notice how the arm has some thinner sections at various points along it. Position the main cable bundle alongside the first section and use a Velcro strap to secure it into position, passing it through the eyelet and wrapping it around until the cable is securely against the metal arm, trying to keep it as tight to the arm as possible. Let's get the opposite end sorted before going any further with this arm then. We'll need our 710mm PTFE tube from the Core XY parts package along with the Bowden bend section from the printed parts. Push one end of the PTFE tube through the printed part, enough so around 1cm protrudes from the larger end. The PTFE tube can then be pushed into the next extruder fitting and the printed bend pushed down over the top as far as it'll go. The PTFE tube can then come back towards the arm and placing it so it sits above the cable bundle, proceed to secure by wrapping another two Velcro straps around the metal swing arm, cable bundle and PTFE tube. Do not pass the PTFE tube through the first strap we previously installed. Instead, the tube can now feed through the Bowden guide and the Core XY plate downwards, leaving the end hanging freely. Finally, merge the PTFE tube and cable bundle together using the final two Velcro straps, trying to keep an equal distance of around 10cm between each. As a quick check, move the extruder down towards the furthest corner and ensure it's not being pulled back by the main cable at all. If it does, you'll need to loosen the cable clip in the top right corner in order to allow for some extra slack, although we're fine in my example as shown here. Ok, so all that's left here is to get the print fan found in the electronics package along with the fan shroud found in the printed parts package installed. Starting with the fan shroud then, hold it upside down in this orientation and insert an M3 square nut carefully into the rear protruding arm, another nearer the centre and a third on the opposite side, before inserting the print fan into the end of the shroud and carefully securing with a single M3 by 25 screw, only until snug. This can then be installed directly onto the back of the extruder carriage, directly onto the two bottom holes in the carriage itself, using two M3 by 10 screws. Next we'll need our two thumb screws, and the actual hot end nozzle assembly from the electronics package. Insert both thumb screws loosely into the two available holes on the side of the heatsink, taking care to run the heatsink fan cable in between both thumb screws. We're just loosely inserting for the moment just so the threads catch. After which we insert the hot end assembly into the bottom hole of the heatsink in the centre of the fan shroud pushing all the way up and keeping the cables pointing out to the left side, far enough so there is approximately a 2mm gap between the heatsink and the brass part of the nozzle. At this point, go ahead and tighten both thumb screws, taking care not to pinch any cables in the process. All done now, all that's left is to connect all of our cables before finishing up. You may find opening the idler door provides a bit more space here. Start with the NTC thermistor cable then and connect it to the port directly above the main cable bundle. The heatsink fan cable next, which goes into the bottom of the outer row. Next it's the hot end thermistor cable up through the cable clip and into the top port. And then the hot end heater cable also going through the cable clip and into the very top horizontal port. Finally, Guide the print fan cable through the channel in the plastic cover and create a loop before plugging it into the remaining middle connector in the love board. That's this side all done and secure now. All that's left then is the extruder motor cable which plugs directly into the top and on the right side the load cell ribbon cable goes into the bottom port and the filament sensor into the top. That concludes all connections to the love board, so time to cover this up now. 
you'll find both covers in the printed parts package. Before covering, take a moment to ensure you have all cables in the correct positions, using this image as a guide. Once confirmed, guide the main cable from the rear right corner through the upper hole on the right side. If the rubber grommet comes loose, simply reinsert once the cable is through. We'll come back to this shortly. For now, place the print head right cover over the right side of the extruder, and taking care not to pinch any cables, proceed to secure into place with two M3x6 screws, only until snug. Back over to the left side then, squeeze the wiring harness as far inward to the love board as possible so that it does not protrude out and interfere with the fitting of the cover. Once happy, attach the left cover before securing with one M3x10 screw, again until snug. And that's our extruder now complete. It can get a little fiddly with the small ports and cables, but with some patience it's rather straightforward. All that's left at this point then is to get the loveboard cable bundle installed around the rear of the printer, where we fed it through the upper hole. So route it through the right hole in the electronics chassis, and plug into the right side of the board, just under the display ribbon cable before securing the cable bundle with the second zip tie, just tight enough to hold everything together, and clip the tail. And with that, next router assembly complete, and you can test by ensuring it can easily reach each corner. We're pretty much done with a majority of the build now, so it's a case of neatening and finishing up from here on, specifically with the bodywork and electronics.